Hi, Julian from AWS here. In this video, I'd like to talk about spot training for Amazon SageMaker. Uh, you may be familiar with spot training on Amazon EC2. Uh, spot is uh, basically unused capacity in EC2 that you can uh, use at a deep discounted price. And uh, the same uh, feature is now available on Amazon SageMaker. And actually, it's been available for, for several months. But uh, I'm always surprised to meet with customers who haven't heard about it. So uh, it's such an important feature in saving money on your training jobs that I think it's uh, worthy of a video. So let me show you how this thing works. OK, um, first, let's quickly recap how we train on SageMaker. So we use uh, an estimator object from the SageMaker SDK. And uh, here I'm using the, the TensorFlow estimator, passing the location of a script and how much infrastructure I want to train on. So here I want to use a C5 to Excel instance, and I can pass hyperparameters and, and, and more. And, um, and this is the default way of training, and we're going to fire up that C5 to Excel instance on demand. Right? We see what's happening here. And um, this means we're going to pay the on-demand price, okay? which is listed on the, on the SageMaker pricing page. And so this managed instance starts. Um, SageMaker will uh, uh, configure it, pull the TensorFlow container, inject your, your script, uh, load your data, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, and training starts, right? Um, we see that this specific job lasted 777 seconds. That's a funny number. And that's about 14, I guess, 13, 14 minutes, something like that. And that's what we were built for. We were built for the exact uh, number of seconds that um, uh, we used for that specific job. Okay, and that's all right. I mean, you know exactly how much you're going to pay because, again, you, you know the uh, you know the price for that uh, uh, the on-demand price for that instance type. Now, of course, if there's a less expensive way to do it, then let's look at it, and it's called managed spot training. Um, again, this has been available on EC2 for years and years, and uh, people have uh, uh, found out many, many clever ways to uh, leverage spot instances on EC2, and it's super, super easy to use on, on SageMaker. So starting from the same estimator, and again, I'm using TensorFlow here, but it would be the same for built-in algos or other frameworks. Um, it works for single instance training. It works for distributed training. It works for hyperparameter tuning. Um, all configurations are supported. And the only thing you need to do is basically add those three lines, uh, those three parameters to your estimator. And um, if you want to find out more, you can go to the uh, SageMaker SDK documentation. Again, I'll put the, the URL in the description. And you know we see those parameters uh, here. Where, where are they? Uh, yeah, here they are. Train new spot instances train max weight, etc. Okay, so this really applies to all estimators. So the first parameter is kind of obvious, right? Uh, train new spot instances equal true. I don't think I need to explain what this does. Uh, and the other two are uh, important and maybe just a little bit confusing. So let me explain. So train max run is the maximum training time for that specific job. OK, so you, you don't want that job to run for more than uh, uh, half an hour in this case. OK, these are seconds. The second one is the total duration of the job. So that means the training time and any additional time um, you would wait for um, spot instances, right? You'd be waiting for spot instances because, you know, maybe maybe they're in hot, uh, high demand, and you have to wait for a few minutes or maybe more for spot instances to be avail available. So that's what train max wait means. Okay, so train max run lets you cap the actual training time. And that's a good, uh, you know, uh, safeguard against any job that might keep running for silly amounts of time because something went wrong. 
And train max wait lets you, again, cap uh, the amount of time you're willing to wait for spot instances to be available. Okay, and maybe maybe you're ready to wait for a few minutes or you know half an hour, uh, which is what I use here. And maybe okay, if they're not available after half an hour, then you would default to using on-demand instances. Okay, that's uh, maybe an example here. Okay, so just use those three things. You know, use spot instances. Uh, how long the job should run, and how long the job should run, plus how um, uh, long are you ready to wait for spot instances. Okay, then call fit, as usual. And now, if we scroll all the way down... All right, so if I scroll all the way down to the training log this time, I see the training time, so 795 seconds which is really close to uh, um, the, the previous training time. So, you know, it's, you know, I don't think we actually waited for spot here. Maybe we waited for a few seconds. I don't know. But, it, you know, it feels to me spot was, uh, was available for that instance type. And we see the billable seconds. And, of course, these are the ones we care about because these are the ones that show up on your AWS bill. And you will only get billed here for 183 seconds, meaning you saved 77% of your training cost. Yep, that's a pretty sweet number, especially if you train lots and lots of times a day. And that happens a lot, you know, if you do distributed training and you run all kinds of experiments and and maybe you run uh, hyperparameter tuning, which, uh, you know, tends to fire up large numbers of jobs. Uh, 77 seconds is a very, very sweet number. And that's all there is to it. Um, so if you're used to working with EC2 instances, uh, you will not see those uh, savings in the EC2 console because uh, just like you're not seeing those uh, SageMaker instances in the EC2 console there, it's all fully managed. So it's not visible in EC2. So don't be surprised if you're not seeing them here. Um, now, what's the catch, right? Somebody's got to say, hey, what's the catch? Because uh, if somebody's going to give you 77% discount, there's got to be a catch. So as with spot instances on EC2, uh, we might have to reclaim that capacity at any given time uh, because we need that capacity for on-demand uh, uh, workloads. So what this means on EC2 is you get a notification and uh, you have two minutes to shut down your instance before we take it away, right? So again, people who've, who've been working with EC2 for a long time know how to do this and it's really not a big deal uh, unless you do something silly and run databases on spot, but please don't do that. Now on SageMaker, we made it much simpler. So you, you won't have to manage any of it. Um, if it should happen that we uh, we have to reclaim that capacity, then your training job is going to be interrupted, and SageMaker will restart it automatically. Okay, uh, so there's nothing to do here. There's no logic. There's no glue uh, to uh, to build. SageMaker will restart your job, and um, and if you um, if you use checkpointing which is a, a technique that saves um, the, the model in training at periodic intervals, then SageMaker will restart from the latest checkpoint. Okay, um, so some of the built-in algos actually support checkpointing. Uh, please refer to the, the SageMaker documentation. At the time of recording, um, I think these are mostly the image um, uh, algorithms for object classification and uh, uh, semantic segmentation and yeah, double check because I'm, I'm quoting from memory here and uh, if you use TensorFlow then checkpointing is actually the default behavior so there's nothing to do um, your TensorFlow jobs will automatically checkpoint the the best epoch and that's where your uh, uh, that's where your job your job will restart from. If you use something else like uh, MXNet or PyTorch or Keras or you know, other libraries, then you just have to enable checkpointing. And you know, in many cases, it's either setting a parameter or uh, or writing a very simple 
bit of coding. Hey, I want a checkpoint. Uh, Keras has a checkpointing callback built in, etc. So just look for you know checkpointing mentions in the documentation of the library you're using, and it's no big deal, right? But again, uh, TensorFlow does that automatically. Um, so when would you not use spot instances? I think that's interesting to discuss uh, as a conclusion. Uh, well, if you have uh, very long-running training jobs that cannot checkpoint for some reason, um, because your algo doesn't allow it, or maybe you're using a custom container, are you doing something a little strange or a little uh, uh, different from normal jobs, and there's no way you can checkpoint, then um, you know it might be a better idea to use on-demand because. Uh, if your job gets interrupted, then you'll restart from scratch. And it's, if it gets interrupted again, then you'll restart from scratch again. And that could be costly and, and frustrating. Um, but okay, that's I guess it's it's the only scenario, right? It's the only scenario. If you're totally unable to checkpoint, then stick to on-demand prices, or you know take your chances with spot. Um, and uh, for everything else, you know give it a try because again. Um, 77% and you could get even more than that depending on instant type uh, is a, I think it's a very very uh, compelling proposition so if you want to know more uh, again please take a look at the SDK for SageMaker and you can also read the blog post that I wrote when that feature came out and uh, I will put those, all those URLs in the description of the video well that's it for um, that's it for spot training and uh, I'll see you soon for other cool SageMaker features. See you.